What's up? I'm back. In this segment, I'm going to talk about super intelligence versus alien intelligence. Now, the title may be interesting to some, but it's not really. <laughs> Realistically, this is a big time problem with the new age spiritual community. The, most of the large spiritual community doesn't really care about aliens too much. But the new age spiritual community, even some people who visit my page, always highly are offended by sometimes my thoughts on aliens. Right? Or for people who say they're in contact with aliens. But here's the thing. If you're in contact with and this is we're gonna come in this is gonna go into super intelligent races. In physicists, in physics, I'm sorry, in physics, right? There are some physicists who say, Oh, they hypothesize what a level one, level two, level three, level four civilization will be like. And in a lot of ways sometimes a lot of people in the UFOlogy community and the New Age community, they want you to believe or be obsessed with aliens. They want you to believe that aliens, some some people even say, I'm a channeler and I'm in contact with aliens. Nothing wrong with that. That's what that that's what rocks your boat. Nothing wrong with that. Here's the problem though. If you're in contact with alien alien life forms, right? You're probably supposed to solve problems scientists can't solve. I'm not telling you that science has to recognize you. No, because they won't, obviously. Because they controlled and bought out themselves, right? But the hungry scientists who... The science itself is still the same. What they present is different, right? So most people don't really realize... For instance, most people don't realize that, hell yeah, scientists are looking for alien life. The difference, though, is they're looking for either two types of life. Microbiotic life or super intelligent life. And people would say, well... Bacteria, microbiotics, like, that's boring, man. I want to hear about dark terrestrials. I had a, a person um, tell me that on Mac Alessi's channel that they want to hear dark terrestrial information. Now, here's the problem. Science is supposed to really protect your logical mind, strengthen it, right? So when you can look at all these people, you understand that there's a big-time gap and there's a big-time problem because, number one, if you're in, Dracos, reptilians, Anunnaki, if they're really the ones behind you, number one, you're supposed to probably be able to solve a lot of scientific things that scientists can't solve, number one. Number two, if you don't want to get too deep, even social issues, racism, classism, you know, wars dealing with religion, destruction of the ecosystem, you're supposed to have solutions for that, to be honest. If you're really in, if you're really in touch with alien intelligences, as you say, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to have solutions to that. This is why any scientist in their right mind always looks at those people and just turns a tunnel, to be honest. Why? Because you can tell they don't have solutions to that. You're not supposed to be going, <laughs> saying you're in touch with aliens and then giving me Eastern philosophy repackaged. doesn't work like that, honestly. And that's not me looking down on you. That's just being real, <laughs> right, to be honest. And you, your mind is so damaged from living in the world, which happens. To be honest, all of our minds get damaged from living in the world. It's our jobs as, as people to heal ourselves, right? Science can do that, in a sense. Do you have to be one of those people who believe everything a scientist says? No, it doesn't challenge them. I'm not saying that. But you should at least have a high school understanding of science, to be honest. If I say atom cell, you know, light, particle, wave, you're supposed to know what that is. If you don't, nothing wrong with that, but you go go find out. The reason why I say this is because... You know, for instance, this is how you know that there's a problem. Why do scientists even look, look for super intelligent species or biotic, like microbiotic species? Well, for in, well, first of all, people don't really respect the microbiotic world as they should. And that usually comes from a lack of scientific understanding. If you, the search for microbiotic worlds, right? Because most people, or I won't say microbiotic worlds, microbiotic life. Most people don't really understand Look, human beings are carbon-based life forms, right? What does that mean? Well, even if you don't believe in the Big Bang, there's, there's evidence now that, like, Indians, the Hindus known for a long time that there were many Big Bangs, there were many creations, there were many destructions of the universe, right? But this Big Bang, which science is slowly seeing it wasn't the beginning of the whole universe, it's just the beginning of this epoch, this cycle, right? 13.7 billion years ago. Humans being carbon-based life forms, you can look and tell we came at the end of that, to be honest, right? We came at the end. 
towards the end to the because for billions of years it was nothing to be honest right so we came at the end of that and because you just know it because hydrogen and helium are going to be the dominant elements at first right carbon comes much later right so you could look at a life form based on carbon it's going to come much later so you're talking about earth first life forms on earth was four billion years right so for nine for about eight or nine billion it was nothing until when it comes to life organic life so for eight nine billion years it was nothing eventually life formed right at the end so when you look at that then you understand though for the for the most part that life is not going to be as abundant because you need for life to exist so many factors have to take place this is the difference for life to exist you have to have i mean because basically helium and hydrogen like a lot of energy a lot of materials is coming from the stars itself right so even some stars in the sky that you're seeing is still part of who you are even though it may not look of course that they don't have as much influence on us as our sun when you look at the stars in the sky yeah they still influence who we are right what we are we're made up of i mean what 65 percent oxygen 17 percent carbon 10 percent uh hydrogen i think nitrogen is seven percent everything else is like 1.3 numbers might be 0.3 or 0.4 off but you get the message right we're made up of, of elements of minerals and a large time what happens is some of those come from the stars sometimes even life needed meteors to transport certain material to earth so they know logically that regular life like us is not gonna it's gonna be more rare than is abundant for the most part right so they also that's just what somebody whose logical mind is strong and working will come to that conclusion right so they know for the most part when you get life it's gonna be more probably bacteria you know and it takes a long time for those those organisms to evolve into people like us but they also know that it's possible that you would get once in a while super intelligent life so what that means is just like how quantum physics and Newtonian physics, classical physics, struggle to unify their theories. Just like occultists from the East and West struggle to unify their theories. Right? When you deal with super intelligent life, they can actually, they know all this. Super intelligent life would even know it so much that they would even know, for instance, good example, even the nitrogen that's in the air. The air is mostly nitrogen, right? But we can't breathe in nitrogen. So, what happens? Bacteria, fungi, and then plants are largely responsible for how we get nitrogen in its current form for us to use. Even the fact that when you look at it from that example, from, from, the, from that point of view, when you look at that example from that point of view, what happens? Well, that means then that even the special relationship that we have with our bacteria, the special relationship the whole ecosystem has with bacteria, largely affects how even life for us is possible. So sometimes it's not even just saying, well, there's life, there's oxygen someplace. It has to, the conditions have to be perfectly right. Even when you look at the moon and the moon is where it is, which is cools life on earth. Hit, you know, light hits the moon and life gets a lot cooler. The moon wasn't there, life would be a lot different on earth. It would be a lot warmer. Every little thing like that that you see means something. And a lot of times when you look at, when you listen to UFOlogists, New Agers, there's an absence of n knowledge when it comes to that. And if they're in contact with those type of species, they probably should have that info, to be honest. So that's the reason why a lot of times, you know, science doesn't take them seriously. When you look at things like light and how photons can be both a wave and a particle, that's interesting to scientists. That's interesting to someone who has a scientific mind. And if you're in such touch with, with these super intelligent races as they say they claim right now i'm not talking about super intelligent races that i'm going to talk speak about next i'm talking about these alien groups that people are into these draconians and grays and anunnaki and all these other type of things right who, who, who even have to take credit right we have to say well the egyptians they didn't build pyramids themselves right because they were too stupid to some aliens did it no a large a large times that comes in because the person's mind it's not really mature enough because realistically even if they were in touch with aliens if you get the information the way they get it you can tell that those groups are not giving them useful information right so even if they were in touch with real beings you can tell the beings are not give them useful information 
and a large time large reason why you know i'm so against it it's not because i have anything personal against new age groups i just think that people have to understand that if you if you're practicing real spirituality real spirituality has suggestions it has solutions to real physical problems i'm going to want to hear what's your what's your opinion on economics and 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 you know, on health and you know classism and racism and gender discrimination i want to hear that like you know what's your thoughts on the ecosystem what's your thoughts on certain species going extinct what does that mean you know i want to hear your thoughts on that because real spirituality solves spiritual problems that's the end of the, that in the end of the day that's what it's about real spirituality is not escapism unfortunately most people are into escapism they're into escaping problems so when you're looking at a super intelligent race, the reason why you know, a lot of astrobiologists, a lot of quantum physicists, you know, they're fascinated with civilizations that, or species that may or may not exist that could be level two, three, and four, is because level two, three, and four, even level one is gonna be above us. Right now we're at level zero, <laughs> to be honest. But even level two, three, and four can solve a lot of our problems, to be honest. And you know, this is something that the more mature occultists have known for a long time. Realistically, it's really, the yogis are right. It's really about transforming your animal mind. If people, if scientists just did even, forget alchemy and magic. If scientists just did yoga and then take that with their science, a lot of, our civilization would be at a much higher point than it is now. But we, we're in a very, frag, you know, we exist as a very fragmented people. So because we don't really have, a unified theory. Some people just are materialists, which are going to lead towards science, and mathematics. Some people are esoteric, you know, spiritualists, metaphysicists. They're going to try to escape the world. It's really about being in the middle, to be honest. And when you're dealing with a super intelligent race, a super intelligent race can solve all that. Now, it's still a form of escapism, for sure. But you can look at the two. You can look at a scientist, right, who's looking, let's say, for microbiotic life forms, right? You know, so they would. You know, explore things like maybe bacteria transporting a meteorite is how from Mars is how civilization on Earth started, right? Or if they find bacteria in Europa or Mars or water on Mars or Europa or any planet, they'll get excited. The regular UFOlogist and New Age person will say, "That's not aliens, man. <laughs> I want to see my greys and reptilians." You see, there's a big problem with that because realistically, this is what people don't really realize. Realistically, finding bacteria in water is probably way more important, to be honest. I mean, the only reason why I'm saying that is because the whole concept of greys and reptilians and, and Anunnaki is probably from, uh, or at least your understanding of it, is from sources who probably were in contact with that anyway. Or you're misrepresenting what those sources say, like the Sumerians. Obviously, the Anunnaki are real, but a lot of people are misrepresenting or mistranslating or just not informed of what it really meant because a lot of times in the ancients when you do mythology you have to basically understand the cultural mind and understand the metaphysics like the the current well the spiritual systems of that culture to understand what the mythology say you just can't say well you know osiris is the god of vegetation and that's it <laughs> right it's not really about that or Atum, uh, Atum, uh, you know a moon ride and talk about the sun like nah it's way beyond that you have to actually understand their cultural mind and you have to study the spiritual systems where that culture came from and then be able to decode the mythology so that's why people mess up a lot of this stuff when it comes to Sumeria so in a lot of ways sometimes even science wanted super intelligent you know wanted to find even one of those two they're still ahead of you know the regular person who may want to hop on a UFO or a little metal ship with a grid and it's not to put you down it's to show listen at the end of the day if you want to understand spiritual, uh, complex spiritual concepts, and you can, your mind it doesn't even vibrate on art or abstract topics, right? Being able to decode that, and then your mind doesn't go on scientific topics, you're in trouble. You're not going to get any complex spiritual systems, and that's why you see what you see right now. You know, when you see on YouTube, you see more and more and more people just putting information, putting information out, and it's cool. That's what you're into. But at the end of the day, you can see why there's a lot of other people who just fed up. Because it's not really attempting to solve any problems. They actually, you know, a lot of people, a lot of spiritual people don't like politics, but they, they actually function like politicians. The reason why I say that, because you look at a politician, the politicians don't really have any real viewpoints. 
their viewpoint is whatever gets them elected. Whatever their team looks at will get them elected, that's their viewpoint. They don't really care. They don't have views. And when you look at a lot of spiritual people, they don't really have views either, to be honest. Because their minds still need to be healed. They still underestimate the damage that takes place when you're eating GMO foods. You know? The damage that takes place when you have a lack of understanding of yourself and a, and a lack of understanding has went to many lifetimes. They underestimate that. So, in a sense, you know, when people say, oh, why are they looking for water and microbiotic organisms? And if you don't understand why, you need to upgrade your science game. And if you really want to be spiritual, you need to upgrade your scientific game as well as, because, you know, I know sometimes reading literature and poetry and Shakespeare is a little bit too much for people. So they made it easy for you guys. They say, hey, we'll go to science fiction, right? It's entertaining. It's not as hard. And some people can't even appreciate that. That's how you know there's a problem. So if you've never heard of astrobiology, you need to look it up. It will really help you a lot understand. Not that you would care as much about maybe about microbiotic organisms of life or theorizing what, because it's not just finding and trying to find, you know, bacteria of life. They also theorize, well, if you get this, mod, if you get an atmosphere of this, made up of this, 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 and this, what will life look like from that facility? Like, you know, what will, what will life look like on that planet that has maybe a different makeup than our planet has? And in a way, I look at it as more astrology, too. I look at it as more astrobiology, normal astrology, astronomy, I'm sorry, normal astronomy, normal biology. You need those things. Because I think a lot of times when you're looking at these people's theories, you can tell it's not, they have, they have not studied one science book when they make up a lot of these theories. And I'm not talking about the sciences. I'm talking about the New Ages, the, the UFOlogists, the New Ages, right? Why? Because largely, if you were really, if an alien really came to you, for the most part, right, if you are a person who's not in a position of power, if the alien was real, right, let's say this really happened, they probably would come to you as like a pen pal. If you're writing someone in Korea, I don't know, France, right, are you writing them to change the? <laughs> are you writing them to change the outcome of France and Korea? No, you're just writing them because you're curious about life in that country. Maybe you want a new friend, but you look at that as a friendship that's individualized. That one friend in Korea, that one friend in France. You're not saying I want you to get the French president and the Korean president, and I want you to spread the message to the whole French and Korean people because you know the person will look crazy. Well, if the aliens are real and they want you to do that, what I hear some channels saying that they want, I mean, you got to be skeptical. At least I will be. And they're not teaching you any real information. You know? You could break down Atlantis. You can't break down, you know, alchemy and making elements that's beyond a periodic table. There should be a problem. Like, you should question that, to be honest. Hope you do. Till next time. Peace.